So it means that we have to understand properly relationships and we have to define what is our relationship. Then we have to be fixed in that relationship and also in our own vow. Prabodhananda Saraswati is fixed in Radhika. He is fixed in his Swaroop of Manjari. And from that angle, from that position, he is offering obeisances to Hari, and then he is glorifying him. But only because Hari is rolls at Radharani's feet. In some books, I already said many verses are present, which our Acharyas are offering obeisances to Hari. They are praying to him. But they are doing it in the Manjari mood for the sake of better service of Radharam. And it's always connected with Lila. Praying to Krishna for better service to Radhika. Because there are some particular Lila is going on. And now the necessity of praying Krishna, praying Hari, is very important seva for Radhika. And last Saturdays, we were reading this four verses from Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. And they are set, actually. Four verses, they are set, they are connected with each other. But Prabhupada Saraswati first offered his desire to Radhika to be guest on her pathways on Vraja. Then, in the second world, Radhika is appearing in the form of golden light, illuminating all Vrindavan. All living beings are illuminating and blooming of happiness because the golden aura of Radhika is appearing in Vrindavan. Then, in third words, Radhika, with the help of her manjari, she is preparing kunja for Krishna. And she is waiting and waiting, but he is not coming. Now, the importance of what this 201 verse is coming. Seeing that Radhika is suffering, Because Krishna is not coming, Manjari is offering obeisances to Hari. She is looking for him. She is trying to find him. And offering obeisances to come. Please come. I'm offering obeisance is only because you are roll, you are rolling at the feet of my Swamini. And you are her lover. And she is suffering so much for you. And now Anantadas Babaji is playing what's happened when Krishna's blue aura appear in Kunja. She came, he came very eagerly 
but something happened. And Gurudev, if you want to add something. No, no, you are doing very well. You share. You share my idea. All right. You. Please. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So this is important. I just before Rasamay starts to read again that we properly understood understand why Acharyas offering prayers. Acharyas who are Rupanugas, who are Radha Dasis, they are offering prayers to Hari. For the better for the sake of better service of Radharani and because he is the lover of my Ishtadev, my loving Swami. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> when Mohana arrives at the trysting place, he understands that he is too late. So, he is a little afraid. The course of love is most amazing. All stopping is done. Although Srimati made all the creatures of Vrindavana cry along with her, when she was separated from Krishna. Now that he has arrived, she suddenly becomes angry. Mana is a culmination of sneha or pranaya. Very nice. I like that. <laughs> Mana is a culmination of sneha or pranaya. In Ujvalani Lavani, it is described how pranaya and mana are interactive. Sneha comes forth from pranaya and thus Mana is attained. Sometimes also mana comes forth from sneha and culminates into pranaya. Hence, pranaya and mana are interactive. Rade. So we have to stop a little bit here to try, according to our understanding, to explain, because there's a lot of Sanskrit words and terminology, technical term, looks like terminal, technical, but for those who can deeply go in the rasa, they can understand the feelings which are going out of intense love. So first thing we should understand that love, pure love, especially pure love, it's also for materialistic love, but especially for pure love, the way of pure love is always unpredictable. It's crooked. It said, Baba is saying crooked, our Acharya is saying, but it means unpredictable also. No one knows which kind of intense emotions out of love will suddenly appear. And each of these emotions are nourishing the love between lovers. Whatever emotion appears, 
it nourishes the love between lovers, between Radha and Mohan. So, first, here Baba is saying that mana, sneha, pranaya, how they are appear. And all this is different stages of pure love, prema. Prema has different stages and according to the intensity of this pure love, they are calling in different names. From Prema is coming Sneha. Sneha is more intense feeling when the hearts of lovers are melting. Why they are melting? Because the feeling of I am yours and you are mine is so intense that their hearts are melting out of love for each other. Radhika's heart is so soft and sometimes Acharyas are calling Madhu. Her heart, her love is like a honey. Sweet, tasteful, nectarian. But there is also another love Grita, like uh, ghee. This is also liquid love, but there is no sweetness so much in that love. And we can understand that the taste of ghee is different from the taste of honey. Ghee is not so tasteful. We have to put sugar in the ghee or different spices to make it tasteful. But still, ghee will always be ghee. This kind of love is the love where devotee has strong conception, I am yours, I am his. And this is Gopi, who is completely opposite party of Shimata Radharani. Not necessary to mention her name. But Radhika is completely drowned in the ocean of feeling, you are mine. And this kind of love is much more stronger, intense, unlimited. Because Radhika is making <clears throat> her lover to enjoy to give him a pleasure with different kinds of expression of her love. And because of this strong conception, you are mine, my dear. You can do whatever you want. You can go wherever you want. You can embrace whomever you like. you will be always mine. This kind of love 
has a natural sweetness. And acharyas are comparing this life like a honey. Liquid honey. So why I'm talking about this, this is the sneha. Because now after that level of sneha, sometimes appears mana, which brings to pranaya, and sometimes it's opposite. First comes pranaya, which brings to mana. So what is the mana? Is the jealous, is this anger out of love? Out of love, not independently. Only because of love, this anger, pure love, angerness appears. And this is great mystic mysticism of pure love of Radhika. And we can see here in through the Lila, everything is including in Lila. We cannot separate feelings from the Lila. Krishna is late, is late, and Radhika suddenly changes her mood, and she is becoming in man, angry of him. And this angerness is the sign of pure love. So this is the reason why I explained Sneha before, that we understand that before this angerness was such a strong melting of the heart of the lovers. I am yours and you are mine is so present in the heart. Then this angerness brings more rasa. Without love, when angerness appears, this is completely destruction. But when love is present, pure love is present, selfish love is present, then angerness, jealousness is the sweet nectar which increases the rasa. And Radhika is getting this mood, entering this mood of angerness because she knows very well that this angerness will please her lover. And Manjaris, who are witnessing this situation, this change of mood, they are getting also great pleasure in seeing Krishna, how he rolls at the feet of Manini Radha. We cannot understand this through the philosophy. We should feel how love is working. Philosophy cannot explain the love. Love has to be felt. felt. There is no manual for love. How to learn how to love. Love has to be received, filled, and given. Love needs to be given. 
and no one can learn how to love. But how to feel this intensity of love, especially pure love, is possible only in close association with those who are drowning in the ocean of that love. Only through this kind of Sangha, with persons who are drowning in the ocean of love, pure love for Radhika, this love can be carved, emotions can be carved in the heart of sadhakas in the form of samskaras. There is no other way. Books will not help us to learn how to love. They can inspire us to seek for the love, but they cannot teach us. But it's not complete true. <laughs> no, this is not complete true. If we are in contact with Rasik devotees who are writing their books, we can enter in the river of prema, which are infusing in their words. And through their words, which are pure of transcendence, the heart of sadaka can start to melt. And this melting is the sign of transcendental feelings. And this is the sign that love uh, is appearing in the heart of sadaka. So it said here, then it comes pranaya. I'm sorry, I took long <laughs> talk. After this angerness, is coming so nice level of intense prema, where Radha and Krishna completely change their identities and Radhika thinks, I am he, I am Krishna. And Krishna is thinking, I am Radhika. The closeness is so intense because of this quarreling, this angerness of Radhika, these attempts of Krishna to pacify her. And we all know that after quarrel, between loving couple to making a peace is much more sweeter than before. Loving peace. There's many things. And sometimes prana is coming first, then mana, and man mana is appearing before pranaya and so on. And Rupa Goswami is writing here to inspire devotees to go to penetrate in these pure feelings, to feel these feelings through his words. Because in that way we will better feel, understand also this exchange of two transcendental lovers, not ordinary boy and girl, transcendental lovers. Please add something. If you have, if you feel, please share. <laughs> Oh. 
राधे 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 जय हो गौरांग वाव सो नाइस आई वॉन्ट टू से दैट विदाउट रियलाइजेशन नो बारी कैन एक्सप्लेन दैट दिस इज एविडेंस दैट अनंतर बाबा जी ही राइटिंग फ्रॉम स्वरूप how is possible that somebody can explain that in the realm of love then sneha sometimes going to pranay and then man is coming sometimes is opposite <laughs> with our realization not possible and i want to ask we have one example that after sneha first man is coming and then mounting into pranay krishna he tries radharani is in man and krishna try to pacify her and then maybe she gives up her man and pranay is there they melting but is there an example of how a lila do you know one lila where first pranay is there and then man is coming i would like to know a lila that happen in that way that is my question and i want to add something more this pranaya when they krishna thinking i am radharani and radharani think i am krishna because they feel each other so strong krishna he can feel radharani so much in all of his being there's nothing else than feeling her only her feeling is there so he cannot think out of that he completely identify <laughs> with that so start thinking i am her and opposite the same uh <clears throat> rani she can feel his longing <laughs> his intense love so much nothing else she feels there's nothing then his feelings in her so she also start thinking oh i am him <laughs> yeah so beautiful you explain goranga sunda so please share one leela where it is <laughs> if you know i want to radhe 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 gurudev do you want to help your poor disciples my voice has a problem my dear please use you sir i cannot talk for long time i understand you so what gora chandra is asking me radhika and krishna exchange their roles this kind of pranaya intense love out of intense love they exchange roles and we can see that suddenly radhik one situation is that radhika is sitting on krishna's lap and she suddenly thinks 
that she is without him. She is sitting in her, his lap and he, she is so confused. Vivarta, completely confused because of intense love and she feels that she is separated in Viraha, although she is sitting in her lap. Manjari so looking this beautiful scene, their faces are blooming out of ecstasy. Because this is situation when Radhika completely lost herself. And this is the example of Viraha, but in the Krishna's present. Suddenly, when she comes to herself, she manifests mana. Where are you so long? Where have you been so long? Although she is sitting all the time on his lap, completely merged with his heart, she felt separation, strong separation, even tears were flowing from her eyes. And then she's coming to herself and say, where you have been? I was waiting for you so long time. So in the beginning, she manifested, both of them, they manifested this strong connection, pranaya, intense love. Pranaya means also intense love. And from intense love, she felt separation. And from that, it's like a transitory emotion. And suddenly from that transitory passing emotion, she was feeling such a strong man. Although she was sitting on his laps all the time. So Manjaris who are sitting and looking and witnessing this scene, they are drowning in the ocean of Rasa and ocean of Mahabhav. And they want to serve this Yugala Kishore who are completely intoxicated with each other that that they are changing the moods and emotions practically in every moment. And no one can predict which kind of emotion will suddenly appear. So we have to feel this. And the best way how we can feel it is through our Manjari Swarup. Then the words of Acharyas who are explaining this changing of moods will penetrate in our hearts more and more, give some skaras deep, 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 deep. I forgot on Hindi, gada, gada, something like that, some skaras, special some skaras, Sukritis. And Sadaka will be able to feel this. But without focusing on Radhika, without establishing strong relationship, I'm yours first, and then you are mine, 
This is not possible because pranaya is manifesting also in relationship with Radhika and her manjaris. And we call it tadatmiya. Oneness in the heart. Who is the oneness in the heart with Radhika? Manjari. And Krishna can be also once in the heart. Because they are one soul in two different bodies. But Manjaris can feel all these feelings through Radhika's feelings. Through Radhika's feelings. Because they have pranaya with Radhika. Not Krishna. With Radhika. Closeness. Such a beautiful closeness is in relationship with Kinkari and Swami. And it's not possible to penetrate deeply through this material body and consciousness. We are listening this, we are reading this, we are talking about this, but every one of us is responsible with himself. How much will practice all this listening, talkings, meditations in a fixed bhava, in the fixed ishtadev? So we need mercy. We need enormous quantity of mercy. Never satiated, satiated with the mercy. But in the humble way, praying and waiting. Radhe, Radhe. I'm sorry, Gorachandra. I, I said, there is much more examples you can or others. Jayananda Ji. Sunit. Radhe, Radhe. Please. You make me eager to share. Please. First of all, I want to give example from Sada Kadea from Human, Human Feelings platform. Before I go to the platform of Radha Mohan's feelings, which I cannot fully comprehend, but which I have heard from our Gurdi. But I can say that in my life, there was a big shift in the attitude towards anger or loving anger or any kind of anger. When one friend, one devotee friend said to me, you know, don't look at anger as something so negative. It is also an expression of intimacy. Because who can be angry to you or with you? They must be kind of close to you. Otherwise, they will never show these feelings. So I can remember, and even nowadays, that shift is coming uh, slowly into my heart. Because usually... The mind and the intelligence want to live in this duality. Oh, this is good. Anger is not so good. Happiness, feelings of joy are good. Anger is not so good. But this duality does not exist on the spiritual level because it's all for increasing of enjoyment. And the second thing I would like to share is that when we were here with Gurudev on his birthday time, Gurudev was also, I felt like testing me with his anger, crushing my ego, of course. But also at the same time, when I reflect on it now, it was this time when we come even more closer because I learned not to be offended in the anger of Gurudev. I learned to feel it as a mercy, as a test, how close are we that we can even in this moments of 
you know, chastisement of anger, of disappointment or whatever, impatience, that our love is not to be broken. And we all know these moments in our relationships here in Mungimandi or in our families, when this moment comes of anger and actually nobody likes it, but somehow we have to deal with it. We want to harmonize as soon as possible. And so I felt that this time when I was tested and purified and came more close to good, if it took me less time. I did not even think about it anymore. And I think this is also some kind of a spiritual quality, not to get stuck on any emotion, but flow with the emotions in the general flow of love. If that makes any sense to you, I don't know. That is what I try to express. That all the feelings, like you said, Goranga Sunna, they are changing very quickly and also it is spontaneous. And between Radha and Mohan, of course, it is another level of you know, non-duality. And I just remember that uh, Leela, that Rupa Goswami is... Uh, sharing so nicely in his Utkalika Valari when uh, Radha and Mohan are looking at each other and they look, see in reflections of themselves in their shining jewel-like bodies and Shimati Radhika becomes very angry because she feels that the picture of herself in Shama Sundara's chest is another lady. So at that moment also there's a uh, a sudden shift of feelings, what had started so nice and so romantically became all of a sudden a, a medium catastrophe because now they are sitting there back to back, sitting next to each other, but not looking at each other, not wanting to make up, kind of stubborn mood. Nobody wants to be the first one to give in. But I remember Gurudev said they both want to stop the situation, but somehow they can't because they are in this loving anger. So what happens here again, the Manjari service are needed to resolve the situation. And so Rupa Manjari says to Krishna, Hey, Mohan. Why are you looking at me like this? Don't wink your eyes. I cannot help you. You got yourself in this situation yourself. I will not help you in this situation. Don't try to wink at me like this. In that moment, Swamini is smiling and both of them can make up again. So that's interesting how the flow of emotion <coughs> Is, is going and all like you said so nicely these emotions are there to, to increase the momentary uh, sweetness and intimacy and even in my sadaka life where I also learn how to become more emotional become more deeper uh, touched in my relationship especially with Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas my Sajatya Sangha uh, it's also my, my training to look at this. How do I react in uh, certain situations and not to become carried away by the false ego, but always stay in love in all circumstances. Radhe, these were just some practical things. Thank you, so nice. So, all emotions are present in love, pure love. All emotions are present in pure love. But it doesn't mean that love is present in all emotions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in love, all emotions are including, like we say, positive and negative. Angerness is including in love, but without love. So it doesn't mean that 
in all emotions, love is present because person can be anger, but it doesn't mean that necessarily he has a love. Yeah. And this is materialistic life, unfortunately. But in transcendental love, and we are always speaking about transcendental love, and goal of life is prema, pure love. All emotions are present, and especially in Radhika, to the utmost intensity. In all devotees who has a love, different emotions are present. But the love is, pure love is the main ingredient. Like you said, your example, and we all can share the same example with Gurudev. <laughs> yeah. Out of love, he is chastising me. And is helping me. Out of love. Radhika is also chastising lovingly her maidservant. But without that love, it will confrontation between two egos. Mm, yes, that is the difference. This is the difference. Mother Yashoda is angry on Krishna. She wants to slap him. She's shouting on him. But the main ingredient in her heart is her love. So this angerness is expression of her love. And all other Rajavasis in different kinds of moods and lilas. But without that love, if we chastise something, someone, if we quarrel with someone, then it's confrontation, at least of our ego, from our side. And if there are two egos, oh my dear. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> so, main ingredients is love. This is the reason why Rupa Goswami is very nicely explaining these two kinds of rasa. Main rasa and subordinate rasa, secondary rasas. Main rasa is my established relationship. I am father of Krishna, I am mother of Krishna, I am friend of Krishna, I am lover of Krishna, I am maid servant of Radhika. This is the main rasa. But in that rasa, there is subordinated rasa, secondary rasa, which are passing coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, and they are nourishing. In this case, we have angerness, like this secondary rasa. But the always love is a strongly fixed, established in the heart of devotee. Mm. Then we can speak about pure love. Joking mood is out of love. Not provoking someone. But when there is love, then jokes are so sweet. Mm -hmm. But without love, jokes are so provoking. Very easily they cross the border mm -hmm. of offenses. But the love is main essence, item of all relationships. Then all emotions are like uh, different jewels in the, this thread of prema. So this is rasa, in general speaking way. This is rasa. And we have to receive, accept these kind of feelings.
Thank you very much. Sunitiji. Is there someone more, please? Because this is very nice, broad subject. If something is coming to you, to continue the flow <laughs> and to help devotees they enter deeply. Rade. I want to speak about one other Leela. One time, Brother Rani, she forgot her waist belt or ankle belt, and Tulsi Manjari is picking it up. And she puts it quick on Radha Rani. But Lalita, she saw it. And Radha Rani, she is ashamed about that, that friends, gopis could see that. And she is chastising Tulsi Manjari. And he has to, she has to go out of the kunja and she's sitting outside of the kunja and crying. Mm -hmm. So I remember that when I read that or listen that Leela, I felt pain. How is possible that Radharani, she rejects the manjari and that manjari has to go out? I think this is a sign that my understanding of pure love is not fully developed. I still have a material conception, like Suniti was talking about this duality. There are good things to be with Radharani, and there are bad things when she is rejecting me or to Lassi Manjan. This pain I felt is uh, my material conditioning. When you explain so nice, Goranga Sundara, that the foundation is the love, no? And when this happens, that Tulasi is rejected and going out of the kunja crying, it doesn't change the love between the Manjari and Srimati Radhika. The connection is so strong that nothing in their relationship changes actually when this happens. So I was thinking before about that, why I feel so much pain because of my material conception of being rejected. No. So we can see how we feel if we listen that Gurudev becomes angry to someone sometimes, or this Leela that I just talked about. No? How much our ego is still there and want to feel the pain <laughs> and want to feel guilty and all of this kind of things. Yeah, it just came in my mind. Rade, Rade. Thank you very much. Hey Rade, I would like to I would like to propose that that pain that you were feeling is not mundane. Because from my understanding that that Manjuri would also feel pain by being rejected by her Swamini, but of course it's transcendental, pure. But she would also feel pain, and you were feeling the reflection of that pain. That's my proposition. I also like to add something. This, um, what you say, uh, Chanda, this 
mm, what did they, she she reject reject Tulsi Manjari. Actually, this is a preparation for another wave of feelings. She rejected her. But when again she will accept her, this wave will be double high than that what happened before. So after we know in this world also, we have sometimes we have uh, in the relationship, we have some what to say. Auseinandersetzung. Turbulence. 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 Yeah. Turbulence. After you sit there. <laughs> <laughs> but after the when we meet again after this, it's only a, a temporary thing, but then the feelings are more higher and better and cleaner than before. And this will happen also with Tulsi Manjari, when again Swamini will accept her. This will create uh, an intense high wave in the feeling of her heart. So this rejection is only a preparation for a higher, a higher feeling. feeling. So Mahabhav, so Mahabhav is a new situation. I listen myself here. For some time, I don't know why. Now it's fine. Now it's good. Okay. So we can see that uh, this is all made by her mercy. To, to create a situation between us and her, between Krishna and her. So, thank you. Mm. I want to add this. Thank you, Jagatam. It was so nice. Different angles of devotees are helping me so much to go deeper in this sublime subject. We can see, we cannot stop speak about this because this is the ocean of transcendental feelings. And in that ocean, so many waves are present. <laughs> each each of one of us is sometimes splashed with another wave. And he received his own realization. Which is according to the Acharyas. Maybe we yes. can continue. I just want to also appreciate Jagatanditi's uh, comment because I can feel your love for Goda Chandra. You have so much love and faith, and you are telling, ah, this is the, this is also true. It's, it's also connected because you are so connected. And I can also appreciate Goda Chandra's humility in saying that I feel this is a duality inside of me. But no, what does the uh, the elder sister say, no, 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 you're just uh, feeling like Tulsi Manjari. It's a reflecting of her feeling. So it's very encouraging. Thank you, Jagatandini. Thank you, Suniti, for your encouragement. Yeah. 
So, it's Radhe Radhe. <clears throat> yeah, Jana so, yes. yes, so I just to feeling, so I may not say maybe longly, but uh, say before Lasarira, so Radhika go Abhisar. Mm. At that time, Manjari together. Then, as soon as she moha, then Radhika's heart is melting. But also, same time, some hesitation there in front of Manjari. And then Radhika turn, turn out Around. direction. Okay, now I, I, I want to go back. To and one, I, hey, Manjari, why you should bring to this Mohan, this, this womanizer? This kind of Suneha mind is coming. Also, another Lira. In Rasa Lira, say, in Govardhan Parikiram, eh, near Punchak, Nabarakunda, and Apsarakunda there. Mm. So this, this story say, Lada Mohan is meeting and doing rasa, Mahalasa, and then meriting. Also, same time, no, different time. So at first, Rasa Lira, they are dancing. Automatically, their heart is melting. Suneha. Mm. And then Radhika see, oh, actually, Moha is dancing with another lady. <laughs> Not only me. What is he doing? He's always saying, you are my lover. But he's dancing with another lady. I'm supposed to only one, only one lady, number one lady, but he's behaving different way. So Radhika become mom. You know, and then Krishna is run out. And sometimes Krishna could find out Radhika. Or sometimes Radhika tried to find out, like Imritara. So sometimes Mohan was look, looking for Radhika. And then Mohan so observed Radhika. So his bodily color completely changed become golden. Mm -hmm. So this is, I don't know, this is, we, we could say, you know, pranaya, that the one sense, you know, Mohan become radical. Too much, too much thinking, oneness. And then again, after Lasarira, they go to Nikunja. And then, one time, Radhika and Mohan was so observing. And then Radhika behaved like Mohan. Mohan behaved like Radhika. So Radharani took Mohan's Pitambar cross. And Radhika took Nirambaras, no, no. Eh, Radhika took Pitambara cross, Mohan took Nirambara cross, Uru cross. So in the morning, until morning, or even sleeping, they completed observing as a mother. So this is kind of, but I don't, 
my intelligence, I cannot accept this is a kind of, you know, like, uh, usually, Goranga, you know, Gorang Sundarapa explained so nicely. Because generally, in order is Suneha, Mana, and Pranaya. This is more easy to understand, but uh, Goranga Sundarapa say, no, actually, this Ananta Baba say, sometimes Pranaya is first. Then man come and then sneha coming. And then Goranga Sundara Prabhu explain because this oneness sometimes feeling I'm yours. Then again feeling increase, you are mine. Then again sometimes feeling no, 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 I'm yours. Because this kind of rasa is the kind of wave. Feeling is always changing. That's so therefore, this spiritual feeling, especially Radha Mohan's feeling, always changing. And Yoga Maya is guiding. Yeah. So this explanation of Gauranga Sundara Pabu and also Gora Chandra's Pabu's explanation. And so nice, you know. I cannot explain like Gora Sundra, Goranga Sundra. I cannot explain, you know, like Gora Chandra, you know. I so much appreciate. And Jagatan did also so much uh, love for, you know, Gora Chandra for everybody. So thank you very much. Jayanandaji, it was so nice what you were talking. You are humble, but <laughs> it's so nice. Gurudev, do you want to add something? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this movement, this movement, I'm sorry, this movement of Gurudev with raising the hands is actually another way of emotions which are coming after this pranaya or mana. Humor. <laughs> is coming joking is coming everyone is laughing everyone is happy what happened this is another way of prema which immediately is coming yes gurudev please i'm sorry that i interrupted you <coughs> Pranaya means you, what I understand is exchange of love. How we exchange in, and the Priya and Pritam, Radha Krishna is playing themselves with pre, uh, Pritam is playing with Priya, and Priya is playing with Pritam. And how they playing? That, that, that is the Yaro. Hello. Yes, good, if we hear you. Good. How they are playing and how they are testing that play. Mm. And in that play, how they miss some time each other. Then they go in mana. <laughs> play. They are together. Like a sitting in the lap of Krishna, and they are, they are forget because they are not looking each other. That that's a prana. Prana when the mind go out of that play, then man come, angerness come. <coughs> So intense, 
their exchange of love, that the moment it goes out from that, the, she become angry. Krishna cannot become angry, but the Swamini become angry immediately with Krishna. That we are and that creates the man to Priya, Radhika. Then she become angry. And then Pritam, Krishna has to convince with many, many ways to make her happy. Again, Prana start. <laughs> yeah, Radhe. That is the mana and prana. When the si, si, comes, sto qua. When a man will not come again, prana will not start. So Pritam Krishna has to again start making how to please to her song. So again, that happening, it creates more growth the pastime. Means the Nittalila grow on and on. That is the man to create more, more develop, more more time going on and on. If not man happen, why Krishna will make pleasing to Radhika? Yeah, this is all meditation. Radhe. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, Gurudev. For pouring our ears and hearts with your sweet words. This is why all the lilas are so fresh, ever fresh, full of anurag. Next <laughs> kind of flame. Create more more long time. Yes. Eternal time. Eternal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. finally. Yeah. Now Ananta Das Babaji explaining what Gurudev just gave a hint. <clears throat> Shrimati pulls her veil over her head and turns her back on Hari as he enters the Kunja. He who steals the hearts of everyone in the world with his unrivaled beauty and sweetness is named Hari. Different forms of Lord are named Hari. But Krishna is so attractive that he even enchants the mind of Lord Vishnu, who is also named Hari. There is no sweetness greater then, or equal to that of Krishna. He is the origin of all the forms of Vishnu that descend from Vaikuntha, and his sweetness cannot be found in Lord Narayana. That can be clearly seen in Lord Narayana's beloved Rama, Lakshmi, who is worshipped 
by all chaste women. Strongly desiring Krishna's sweetness, she gave up all sense gratification and took firm vows and performed severe penance. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila Krishna is the queen essence of sweetness and there is no other perfection above it. He is the jewel mine of all qualities like sweetness. He has given his qualities to all other divine manifestations. In this way, we know all the activities of the divine manifestations. But Radharani steals even the heart of Hari, of him who steals the hearts of everyone in this world. No matter what Krishna tries to please his angry beloved, nothing helps. So he decides to take shelter of the means called nati or offering obeisances. Shirupa Goswami writes in Ujvalani Lamani, the seven means to break the peak of the beloved are appeasement, separation, worship, giving a present, offering obeisances, ignoring, or taking shelter of another mellow. Humbly falling at the beloved's feet is called Nati. Hari holds the feet of his beloved on his head and humbly prays, O oh, Prema Mai, please forgive me. The maidservant sees how the peacock feather crown of the universal enchanter rolls at Swamini's lotus feet. Aha, what an enchanting beauty! How sweetly transcendence falls at the feet of the pinnacle of love. The maidservant is completely enchanted. I feel Gurudev, we don't hear you. Okay. Radhe Radhe. We can see here different kinds of making a peace to calm down Radhika, to making a peace with Radhika, which Krishna is trying. And different kinds of mana are also requires different kinds of approach sometimes there is a reason strong reason for radhika's mana 
And sometimes there is no any reason. And this kind of mana is most difficult to pacify when there is no reason. <laughs> Krishna is confused how to approach. And he tries and tries mixing these seven ways of breaking the mana. He is mixing all together. He is a submissive giving nice words to her, rolling at her feet. All the worshipping her, but it doesn't work. Because no one knows why Radhika is full of mana. And then Krishna is submissive way humbly approached to Radhika's maidservant and said, please, help me solve this situation. Only you can solve this situation. I don't know what to do. Someone who is the Lord of the universe, spiritual and material, someone who is stealing the hearts of everyone, who is attractive to everyone, cannot find solution to make Radhika cool down. Actually, pardon me to say, wow. Krishna promised to every his creation, what you will do, I will give it time more to you. So when the any any gopis want to give love, Krishna has to do that. This God has to do that. My God has to do that. Right? This is the nature of the God. So Radhika, no reason of mana, but she knows he has he has promised, so he has to do that. So if I give some love, this not tasteful. Now I give some salty thing to become mana that he will increase his love more. So this is the reason of no reason of his angerness, that she, he want to give more love to him, to realize this. So Radhika knows the best what he needs, and that she gave. The best she gave, best she gave. So she become angry without prison to give test of beautiful love inside even Krishna to increase more love, more love. And she without reason she become angry. And at the same time, in last, she embraces and she accepts him. And he says, Sorry to me. Because only you want to increase Krishna's love, you want to please him with different, different tests. <coughs> what I feel I share you. Wow. So it's also beautiful reason behind this, no reason of his mana. Radhe. 
Radha Gurudev, so nice. Again, these waves. Waves are created by Mahabhav. She is the creator of big waves on the ocean of Rasa. And actually, this could be the reason we now understand. We cannot see reason behind the man. But when we see this big wave, then that is the reason. Huh, Gurudev? Yes. One time with uh, Arjuna in Ecuador, we went to one place. They invite us in lunch. And when I'm sitting there, I see the waves are moving to the ocean. And after half an hour, I say, ocean is moving to the waves. You remember who's Har house? Hari's house. Huh? Hari's. Hari's house. Yeah. Right? I was feeling how the Krishna and Radha's exchange of love in that. Arjuna is here, and I feel that. This is the beautiful place in Vayakil. He bring me there. Arjuna is also there. He see the, the, the rivers are going to the ocean and ocean is going to the river. Wow. Yeah. Friend. So this is this, this area in the city where the ocean meets the a certain time wow. the tide goes up and tides go down and when tide goes up it goes inside the river and when tides go down the river goes inside the the ocean so both are exchanging when tide goes down it goes to the to the ocean when tides go up ocean goes inside the river both are exchanging it's two way two way love not only one <laughs> this relationship no relationship not two way <laughs> Radha Krishna, love I am feeling, and I'm, we are sitting and feeling that, how the Radha and Krishna is moving sometime. Krishna is moving to give love, massaging the feet of Radhika, trying to please her. And then sometime Radha is flowing to the Krishna by his waves to fulfill his desire. Sitting with the, this place, Arjuna bring me there. And I was so happy that I feel that I'm in Vrindavan and I'm feeling Radha Krishna change of love. Wow. So Arjuna is here. I remember this pastime of Vaiki. Guru leader. Uh -huh. Guru, Guru Dev Lila. Guru Dev Lila always showing the pastimes everywhere. Okay. What can I say? <laughs> Jai Radha. Hari holds the feet of his beloved on his head and humbly prays, O oh, Prema Mai, please forgive me. The maid servant sees how the peacock feather crown of the universal enchanter rolls at Swamini's lotus feet. What an enchanting beauty. 
how sweetly transcendence falls at the feet of the pinnacle of love. The maidservant is completely enchanted. The maidservant calls Hari Rasagana Mohanamurti, the very form of deep rasa. The Upanishads say, Rastavaisa, he is rasa. And Krishna is again the Rasa Ghana Mohana Murti, the form of condensed Rasa. Rasa Raja Shri Krishna is most enchanting when he falls at Radhika's lotus feet. This sweetness cannot be relished, though, unless one accepts the mood of Shiradika's maidservants. Manjariba. This is the key point. L love, servant, you cannot understand. You have to become servant of love to feel it. God's servant cannot understand this. You have to be servant of the love to feel that. The feeling of her inside. God, if you are servant of God, you see them from his feelings. And when you are a servant of the love, you see that feeling, how, why he become without meaning anger to the, his lover. That is the beautiful meaning behind that. So we have to become servant of love, not God's servant. Then feeling will not come so deep inside us. We will take the mood of the God and this is enjoy our mood. And the enjoyed mood is the servant of the love. How to give more and more enjoyment to my lover. Good, this, this, this makes me remember the in the Bible, there's this part where Jesus, before going to the crucifixion, he, he washes and massages the feet of all his disciples. He goes, every disciple he massages feet and washes the feet. And he said, if you want to be the highest, you have to be a servant. You have to serve and you have to wash the feet of everyone. Yeah. This, this, he says. That is that. To be a servant of love, to be a humble. If you are not humble, you cannot wash the feet of everyone. That is love moving. You are receiving the love of all your devotee. And that love, we become rich. Love to receive. Love to mercy. Love is a mercy in our life. So, even the God wants to wash the feet of the love. That is teaching by doing his services to the love. That is a divine love. Rather. 
Thank you. Love has a one way to be humble, to be a servant, and to serve. Love is not for enjoying, love is for service. God is the enjoyer, He enjoys the love. And we are the servant to give love to Him. Radhe, Radhe. <clears throat> Although sugar cane is naturally sweet, that sweetness cannot be tasted at unless the sweet juice is squeezed out. A toothless baby or a toothless old man cannot chew the sweet juice out of the cane. Only a young person with strong teeth can. In the same way, a person who has no love and devotion for Krishna cannot relish his sweetness. An aspirant should therefore have a sincere desire to love Krishna. Sri Radhika can squeeze all the sweet juice out of him with the mill of her pure love. And those who take shelter of her and her girlfriends and maid servants can also relish that sweetness according to the amount of love they develop. This is the extraordinary greatness of the shelter of Srimati's lotus feet. We can see here that if the sadaka person wants to taste the sweetness and beauty, he has to take the shelter of love. With dharma, with rituals, with prescribed duties, austerities, yogas, and so on and so on and so on, artha, kama, no one can taste the sweetness and beauty. Because sweetness is a beauty, and beauty is the sweetness of love. Love cannot exist without beauty and sweetness. And symptom of love is beauty and sweetness. And this is most prominent, most, 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 most prominent in Vrindavan, in relationship with Rajavasis, and Krishna, and especially, especially in relationship with Radhika and Krishna in this Parakya Bhava mood. This sweetness, Krishna become, is becoming an embodiment of sweetness when he is in close, intimate association with Radhika. And he is hankering for this position. He is ready to be conquered, to relish his own sweetness 
to Radhika's heart. And then later on, he is deciding to become Gora Anga. Radhika. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of Radhika. And we Rasamai read in a previous page how Lakshmi tried to approach Krishna. He gave up, she gave up everything, but she couldn't and came in the border of Vraja. <laughs> but she couldn't taste the sweetness of Krishna because she couldn't and she didn't want to take the mood of gopis. And Baba is saying, those who take shelter of her, of Radhika, and Radhika's girlfriends and maidservants can all relish the sweetness. Because Krishna rejected all other opulences which are present in other dhammas, in other planets, Vaikuntas, even in Dvaraka. She, he rejected. And he wanted to swim in sweetness and beauty of his own, but also to enter deeply in the sweetness and beauty of his devotees. And when he is with Radhika, who is embodiment of sweetness and beauty, because she is embodiment of love, she, he is rolling at her lotus feet. Nothing to do. He doesn't know what to do out of ecstasy. He has to roll. <laughs> and it means that he is completely conquered. And this kind of hurry, Manjari wants to see. <laughs> Radhe Rama dear. so nice. Uh, so, Hari stealing the heart of all living entities with the wink of his eyes. <laughs> but in front of Radharani, when she is in man, he don't know what to do. And Baba is writing so nice that transcendence rolling on the feet of love. So, Krishna, all his opulences has no meaning. His strength, his fame, his wealth, his renunciation, meaning he is submissive, no? even that doesn't help. And even his beauty doesn't help now. So he has all his opulences, <laughs> but nothing works. And it's surprising, no? we know about Krishna's opulences, but love is not one of his opulences. <laughs> no? He has fame, strength, wealth, knowledge. His, all his knowledge also doesn't work. But love is not his opulence. Love is the opulence of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> that is... 
beautiful. And this love is essence of his existence. It's not opulence, it's essence of his existence deeply rooted in his heart. Because without this love, he will not exist. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> he will not be able to do anything. So it means that she is giving him a life because of her. He is alive and he is sweet and he is able to do so many things. But we like to see him in position when he is rolling. Thank you, Gorichinja. And how, please, Rasamai, you are reading much better than me. Read again this sentence. Sri Radhika can squeeze and so on and so on. Mm. Mm. Sri Radhika can squeeze all the sweet juice out of Krishna with the mill of her pure love. And those who take shelter of her and her girlfriends and maidservants can also relish that sweetness according to the amount of love they develop. She can squeeze all sweetness and beauty from all jivas also. From all, all of us. How she can squeeze it? Through the meal of her pure love. Then we can fully surrender. Without receiving the mercy of pure love, Jiva never can surrender. Only because of love, Jiva can fully surrender. Because Radhika will squeeze the sweetness of Jiva and infuse Jiva with her sweetness and her love. So this is the taking full ashray, full shelter of Mahabhava Swarupini Radha Thakurani. To, we want to be squeezed, that our hearts are squeezed, not just scratched, but the squeezed. And how Radhika is doing it? Through her manjari. And when the heart is squeezed, then person becoming dasi, dasi of the dasi, on the dasi, of the dasi, and finally attain normal <laughs> position close with the energy who is giving, 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 and nothing else than giving the pure love. She is squeezing Krishna's heart. It's not so big deal to maybe squeeze our hearts. But we should offer. This is what's upon us to offer. Swaha. That. Thank you. It's little more left. Yeah. Little okay. more. Yeah. With his loving cleverness, Hari managed to break Srimati's speak. Seeing her hero sitting at her feet, 
Srimati starts crying, pulls him up, and embraces him. In this way, Hari becomes gladdened by a great festival of wonderful love pastimes. Vichitra Keli Mahotsavo Lasitam. The maidservant looks into the kunja through the holes in the vines to witness that ecstatic festival of love. Being grateful <clears throat> to Hari for allowing her to relish that sweet sight, the maidservant offers obeisances unto him, saying, I offer my obeisances unto Hari, who wears a beautiful crown of peacock feathers. Thus ends the verse 201. Jai Shri. Jai Shri. Thank you very much, everyone. I think this time